<laughs> Welcome again to Grace Believers Bible Study. We got a good treat again today. Occasionally we'll have Brother Joseph Ellie come up, and today is one of those days. You're all here for him, I know you are. A rowdy crowd it is. But look, I'm going to turn you over to Brother Joseph Ellie. Take it away, brother. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Appreciate it. All right. I want to thank you for the privilege of being here. I'd like to say a little prayer before we get started. Dear Father, we thank you, Lord, for the honor and the privilege to be here uh, all together at the body of Christ to, to speak your word and hopefully we'll be edified at not only people here but the people listening to us. And Lord, we hope this world will go into their hearts and they'll get to know you more and more and get to know who you really are. Thank you. Uh, my talk today is uh, going to be about Jesus Christ. Uh, can an imposter claim to be the true Messiah? Is it Jesus or somebody else? That's the problem, okay? We're going to find that that deception is a big problem since day one. Remember when, when uh, Eve listened to, uh, to Satan and she took that, uh, that bite of the, uh, the fruit? He said, did God really say? What he did was he planted a seed in her head to deceive her. Once she starts to doubt, boom. She went down, Adam went down, and then they both were kicked out and, and Satan was made the god of this world and it's been terrible ever since, right down to today. Why? Deception. Deception, that's the big problem. Let me show you what Jesus thinks about deception. We got uh, Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5. Let me show you what he said. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, deceive you. For many shall come in my name, impostors, and saying that I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. That's the big problem. That's the devil's always, always trick. Deception, deception. Putting that doubt in your mind, and now he wants an impostor to take place, take Jesus' place. In fact, uh, the term antichrist, everybody thinks he's against Christ. Normally, anti means against. In this case, antichrist means in lieu of a counterfeit Christ. That's why the, uh, the, he gets, gets worshipped as God, because he's an, an imposter. He is an antichrist. He's in lieu of Christ. He impersonates Jesus. That's why he gets worshipped. Okay. Now, also, Jesus emphasized this thing about deception in verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. Again, same thing, deception. Now, what process did God use to help us to identify the true Messiah so we wouldn't be deceived? Okay? He used a process of elimination called profiling. Did you ever hear about the term profiling? Okay? You got so many choices. You take one, other choices are no good. Another one, you eliminate all the choices. Okay? Let's just say an example. A bank robber in New York City robs a bank. Okay? They have witnesses. Oh, we saw it. So the police say, okay, what did you see? Identify this guy. They say, well, it's a man. By profiling, we eliminate all women. Now we got down to a man, all right? Then they say, what about him? Well, he's Caucasian. That eliminates all people of color. You have a white man now. We know who robbed a bank. Then they say, what about him? And well, he's very, very tall, like almost seven feet tall, like a bas basketball player. That eliminates all short people, okay? Then he says he's very skinny, all right? That eliminates the fat man. That lets me off. <laughs> So he's tall, he's white, and he's skinny, all right? And he has an only a left leg, only one leg. The right leg is missing, all right? So of all the men in the world, in, in New York City, he's white, he's tall, he's skinny, and his right leg is missing. No problem profiling this guy. And he's very old, too. He's over 70. What a time to rob a bank. So we know he's a white man, he's very tall, skinny, and he only has one leg, and he's over 70, okay? New York City, a city of 10 million people, won't be any problem trying to find this guy. He can't hide for long, okay? When God sent Jesus to earth as the Messiah, he wanted to make sure that there would be no problem identifying Jesus, like this, like this bank robber, okay? And Jesus is the one and only Messiah. God wanted to make it impossible for an imposter to claim himself as the Messiah. He gave us a King James Bible, which has over 300 prophecies to identify Jesus, okay? Of Jesus and the fulfillments by Jesus. Not only identified Jesus, but he fulfilled all 300 of them. This made it possible for anyone to identify Jesus as a true Messiah 
and not be deceived. All right? You have the King James Bible. There's over 300 prophecies about Jesus. He filled them. No problem, okay? The 300 plus prophecies are told, are foretold many details about Jesus to eliminate the imposter trying to pat himself off as the Messiah. Only the true Messiah could fulfill all of the prophecies. Now, can anyone possibly arrange to claim some of the non-specific uh, prophecies of Jesus? Yeah. There are a lot, a lot of non-specific uh, prophecies I'll get into in a minute, but it would be impossible for an imposter to fulfill all the specific. You have specific prophecies and non-specific. I'll show the difference between them, okay? Now, here are the odds of fulfilling a prophecy. <coughs> One out of two equals 50%, right? You can't go wrong with that. Then we have one out of four. That's 25%. All right? It's getting more difficult every time. It goes down and down. The more choices you have, the less you're going to win. All right? How about one out of ten? That's one-tenth, or ten percent. That's only ten. One out of ten, okay? One percent, one-tenth of chance, okay? Now, the more prophecies you and would have to, to fulfill, the smaller the chance. The more prophecies, the smaller the chance. How about fulfilling all ten of these prophecies? Not just one, but all of them, okay? The ch I'll show you the chances of that. Ten prophecies equals ten to the tenth power, which is equal ten times itself ten times. The chances are one in a hundred million. Ten times ten times ten times ten. All right? That's fulfilling only ten prophecies. To get all ten right, what is worse than the Powerball? It's really hard. A hundred million. Okay? <laughs> How about 50 prophecies? That's 10 to the 157th power. It jumps from 10 to 50, 10 times itself, 157 times. That number is unreal. Yeah. How many prophecies do we know about, Joe? 300. I'll show you how many I found. Only 70, but it's nothing. There's 300 in the Bible. Yeah, all right. But 10, to fulfill all 50 of these things, 10 times itself, 157 times. There's no way. Okay? Now, how about fulfilling all 300? Right? Jesus did it. 10 to infinity. 10 times itself, an infinite number of times, forever and ever and ever. And you never get to the end of that number. That's how big it is. To fulfill 300, the number goes up to infinity. One chance in, no way you can do it, okay? God's no dummy. He knows what he's doing. He took care of these imposters. <laughs> okay. Let's look at some of the prophecies I spoke of, all right? And I'll tell you what, what God did here. I got a sheet of paper here. You can find it in a lot of, a lot of uh, documents. I found this one only had 70 prophecies about Jesus, okay? Over 300, but someone went to the trouble to put down 70 of them, okay? Now, out of the 70, all right, there are 42 non-specific that anybody can fill, all right? But there are 30 that are very specific that nobody can fill, okay? Look at the non-specific ones, okay? Like born in Bethlehem in Judea. A lot of people born there, okay? All right. The guy said, yeah, I was born in Bethlehem. I'm the Messiah. And you say, well, I'm a Nazarene. I come from Nazareth. Okay, hey, yeah, boy, it could be. All right. And he says, it would be humble. He had a humble life. I'm humble. An imposter could deceive people by this, this line of thinking. Okay. And it says, well, I have a public ministry. That's what Jesus did. Again, non-specific. Anybody could fill it. And another one is, the mystery, his ministry began in Galilee. That's what Jesus did. And this imposter could say he did the same thing. There's 42, non-specific, like this. Anybody can fill it. If you got money and arrange it, you can do it. However, out of the 72, it is 30 specific that you can't duplicate. 
you, no matter how much money you got, no matter who you know, you can't do it. Number one, the time of Jesus coming. Right? That's Daniel 9, 25 and 26. Okay? It said, there's 490 years from the day the, the decree was gone, uh, put in by Cyrus, all right, to, to build, the, uh, uh, build, the, 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 build the wall. To build the wall, okay? 490 years. That's uh, 70 years, all right? All right? And the decree was given by Cyrus in 454 B.C. So that's 483 years. The Bible says that Christ is going to become at the, at the end of the 483 years and be crucified. All right? He was. From 454 to 843 B.C., he was crucified in 29 A.D. Just like Daniel said. Right on time. All right? Then it goes down to Jesus would be in Egypt for four years. Okay? Let me show you the scripture in Matthew 2, 13 and 15. And when they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child and destroy him. And when he arose and took the young child and his mother by night, he departed to Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod. That's the key, okay? Josephus, the historian, said that Herod died at the turn of the century. That's when Herod died. Right? And Jesus and his, and his parents were gone four years before that. So they were 4 B.C. He was born around 4 to 5 B.C. Because they were in, in Egypt for four years until the turn of the century. Now, you go from 4 B.C. He was 33 years old when he died, right? 33 minus 4 B.C. 29 A.D. Again. That's two prophecies to show right around 29, maybe 30, depending on the, you know, the calendar, but we know exactly, probably, usually where he was killed, all right? By two prophecies, 29 A.D. Now, the thing is, an imposter would have to know this. He can't come years before or years after. He's got to come at this time when Jesus was alive. Otherwise, he wouldn't be taken as an imposter, as as a, as a Messiah, all right? An apostle would have to come at that particular time. Otherwise, it won't do any good. All right, now, another one more specific, okay? He was a prophet, like Moses. An apostle can't be a prophet. That's come from God, all right? Then he would heal. He was a healer. He healed the blind, the lame, and the crippled. People deaf, that he could hear, all right? How can an apostle do that? These are specific. You can't do it, okay? And he was a miracle worker. He raised the dead, all right? Only, by, only he can do it, the real one. But the real way you can eliminate the apostles is his lineage, okay? He come from Abraham. Now, all Jews, including the apostles, might have started from Abraham. But after that, he had to come through Isaac. He had to come through Jacob. You eliminate anybody else who didn't come through Isaac. And then you get the guy coming through Isaac and then Jacob. If he wasn't born through Jacob's family, eliminate him, like the old man who robbed the bank. They had to come through Judah, the tribe of Judah. Again, eliminate everybody else who's not in that tribe. He came through Jesse. More eliminations. And then David. You eliminate every possible person who is not born in this line. Who's that leave? The real Jesus. The real one. Okay? Now, we have Jesus crucified, scourged and crucified. There's about a dozen prophecies about that. Now, an apostle, you think an apostle could get himself killed? Where's his ministry? He's got to stay alive, right? So it prophesied that you would be cut off, okay? So he couldn't do that. That eliminates the, the imposter, right? Now, one thing on the cross, just in case the imposter was stupid enough to say, well, I'm going to die for my, my ministry, okay? All right? When Jesus was on the cross, his bones were not broken. In those days, when a, a person being crucified,
his feet were here, and his feet were put, though they bent. So to breathe, he had to push up to breathe. Doing this constantly, all right? If you break the man's bones on his legs, what happened? He can't push up and he dies. That's how they killed all these people on the cross. All right, but Jesus never had a bone broken, didn't have to break his bones. He was speared with a spear. That's a prophecy, okay? Again, how could the uh, imposter arrange that? There's no way. You can't bribe those, those Roman guards. No way. <laughs> okay, then he was in the ground in the tomb three days. In April, it gets kind of warm in Israel, right? What happens to a body in three days? It gets ripe. It gets ripe. Believe me, I've seen ripe people when I flew Medivac in Vietnam. Whoa, it'll knock you out. Three days, boom. All right? And yet, he rose, no corruption. His skin was good. No problem. Yeah, he did not smell. The three days in that heat, he came back. Boing. Also, they pulled his beard out, and yet his beard grew back. He was okay. Yeah, yeah. You find that in Psalms. Right? They pulled his beard out by the roots, and yet his beard came back. He was okay. All right? Then, resurrected on the first, on the first day of the week. All right, the Antichrist, if he w- I mean the, uh, the imposter, if he would resurrect, he'd be on the first day of the week. But nobody ever came back from the dead. Only Jesus did, okay? And then finally he would ascend into heaven from Mount of Olives. A lot of people saw him going up. Boom. How can the imposter do that? There's no way. So you can see, I only did about 15 of these. That's specific. There's no way an imposter could take Jesus' place and do that. No way. Now, yes. Oh no! Just said that he was on Mount Olives, and they watched him going up, head first. When he comes back, it's going to be feet first, same place. Okay, you can see that. But he just went up like levitation. Hey, the Bible says it. I believe it. You know. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, I'll repeat the question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, would you ask, anybody ask a question, stop me, I'll repeat the question so they can hear it, okay? Yeah, he was wondering, how, would they, how did he ascend? All right, he ascended bodily, all right? Head first, okay? Now, since God made it so easy to identify Jesus as a true Messiah, how did Israel miss it? They knew the scriptures. How did they miss it? Here's the problem. Israel had a history of first being faithful to God and then falling away into apostasy, worshiping idols and other false gods. You find here, Israel's history is like a sine wave. Year after year after year, okay? They started here on top. Oh, we love you, God. We serve you, okay? Going down, they did evil. You know why? They're marrying Gentiles. These women brought in false, false uh, worship, and the men were, were corrupted, okay? It's always the women. <laughs> anyway, they did evil. And then when they get to the bottom here, they're conquered by somebody, all right? In 730 B.C., Assyria, through Sennacherib, whipped them. Boom! Took them away. Another cycle. Another cycle comes back. The down again, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, 606 B.C. Over and over again. Every time they get away from God, boom, they're getting their butts kicked. Okay? Oh, we're sorry, God, we're sorry. They repent. They're back up here. But then again, the final one is down here coming down. They did evil and Jesus shows up. All right? 29 AD, he's crucified. All right? After that, they're conquered again. At the bottom, where they're totally apostate. By Rome, 70 AD, 40 years later, exactly 40 years. Okay? Now, the problem is, Israel had 39 kings, 39 of them, all right, to rule over them throughout the years. Only eight were good kings. Only eight, all right? And these eight kings led the people faithfully, followed God, no false idols, nothing, okay? But, how about the 31? Other 31 kings took Israel down, took them down 31 times, over and over and over again, okay? 
Yeah, false teaching. <laughs> Basically, in the big thing that God hated was idol worship. They worship false gods. They made idols. Okay? Yes? So that thing with the ram's head and all the women and the what, did that come from that? Yeah, yeah. The ram's head and all the idols and the golden calf and all that kind of stuff. Well, it comes from these people. Well, they have uh, false idols. They make them out of wood, out of iron, you know, out, of, uh, out of, of gold. You know, they make them. And they worship them. They even worship rocks. And they worship the sun, the moon, yeah. And the Jews picked this up when they married these women, all right, from these, uh, from these countries. They brought them in, and boom. God said, don't mess with these people. Kill them all. But they didn't. And they brought in false worship. That's the problem. Yep. Now, when Jesus showed up at the beginning of the first century, Israel was on its way down. That's the problem. If he came here, no problem. But God saw to it, he came here. Why? To be crucified, to pay for our sins. But that wasn't part of the program. He just died when he said, I am God. I'm the Messiah. That's why they got rid of him. The leaders of the people appeared to be serving God, but in reality... They did evil and forsook God every single time. And that's the price they pay every time. Now the following scriptures re reveal Jesus' spiritual condition, I mean Israel's spiritual condition as described by Jesus. Now Matthew 23, 1 to 38, now don't go there because there's 38 scriptures. I don't have time to read them all. <laughs> all right? So basically what happened in Jesus read these people the riot act in Matthew 23, 1 to 38. He said... He called religious leaders corrupt by not doing what they preached. He called them hypocrites, fools, snakes, blind guys, full of iniquity and dead men's bones, whited sepulchers. That's what he called them, okay? Then Luke 11, 29 to 52. Again, too many, 29 scriptures. I can't read those, okay? But he said, Jesus called the leaders and priests an evil generation full of darkness, which cleaned the outside of their cups, but the insides were full of wickedness. You look good on the outside, but inside, you're corrupt and rotten. That's what he said to them. Okay? Then Luke 12, 56. He told the Pharisees and scribes they could discern the weather by looking at the sky, but could not discern the time of his coming. They knew, Daniel 9. In fact, the Pharisees, these guys were really haughty, all right? They, they were so religious, they had a band around their head with a box and bound around their arm with a box. The box had scriptures. Look at me. I know scriptures. Hey, they were very haughty, very condescending, and yet they were away from God. They were apostate. Now, the bottom of the list in Luke 19, 43 to 44. Let me get that for you. Luke 19, 43 to 44. Jesus told these people, and the day shall come upon thee, thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee, and compass round thee, and keep thee on every side. He's going to surround you, and clean your clock. They shall lay even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave thee one stone upon another, because thou not knowest the time of thy visitation. Matthew 24, verses 1 through 4, says the same thing. You see this temple here? It's going down. Not one stone upon another. He told them twice. Okay. Now in John eight fifty six to fifty nine, let me show you that one. Here Jesus claims to be God, the I am. He was hated for this. Look what he says. Uh, that's uh, John eight fifty six to fifty nine. He said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. And they said to and the Jews said to him, Thou art not at fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? And he said, Jesus said to them, Very really I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Where did you hear that before? All right? At, on top of the mount, when uh, uh, when Moses was up there, he asked the, the burning bush, and who should I say sent me? He said, Tell him I am sent you. That was Jesus, the I am. And Jesus says, I am, I am God. Okay? <laughs> they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out among them, seeing, uh, going through the midst of them, and, and so passed by, went right through them. No problem. They were going to stone him. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, and the last one is John 19, verses 1 through 42. Again, 42 scriptures. But this shows the ultimate rejection of Jesus by having him scourged and crucified. You want to see exactly what happened to him? Those 42, 42 verses will, will make you cry. What they did to this guy. What he did. What he, what he took for us. All right? Okay. Now, summary. To this day, Israel has been paying the price for not recognizing and rejecting Jesus as its Messiah. Okay? It has been conquered and dispersed and is hated by just about every nation in the, in the world. You're going to find Ezekiel 37, 1 through 6, and Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, have prophesied the return of, of Israel as a nation, which fulfilled in May 14, 1948. That's already happened. Okay? However, it still has been in hot water because it has not accepted its Messiah. They've been hot water ever since, even though they're back as a nation, they're being harassed all the time. All right? Israel's Muslim neighbors have unsuccessfully attacked it in two wars. And the Jews beat them back. Okay? And twice, and they've been harassed endlessly and will continue to be harassed until the Antichrist makes a seven-year treaty, peace treaty, between Israel and its neighbors. Look at Daniel 9:27. And he, the Antichrist, will confirm the covenant with many for one week, seven years, the seven-year tribulation, okay? In the midst of the week, he shall cause sacrifice and the oblation to cease, all right? Halfway through, three and a half years in tribulation, he's going to say, he's going to step into the, the tabernacle and say, I am God, all right? You'll find that in Matthew 24, verse 15, I am God, whoa, worship me, okay? Again, an imposter, all right? Okay. Let's see now. Yeah. Now, this peace treaty, it's supposed to be a peace treaty. We'll start off peacefully, but it'll, it'll, uh, uh, it'll turn to worms in no time. It says, the peace treaty will fall apart, resulting in a seven-year tribulation, during which two-thirds of Israel will be killed. Do you know that? Yeah, two-thirds are yet to die. Let me show you. Zechariah. Zechariah 13, 8 and 9. Think the Holocaust was bad? They got more coming. Yeah, because they've been so far away from God. Now, they've been low am I away from God ever since. Right? Hosea 1 9. It says, You are no longer my people. You are low am I. They've been no, they have not been God's people all these years until Zechariah 13 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass that in the land saith the Lord, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Two-thirds of all the Jews are going to die. But the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined. Try them as gold is tried, and, call up, and they shall call upon my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. Now he says, they're my people. Before he said, your people. Now he says, my people. Okay? And they shall say, the Lord is our God. Finally, no longer low am I. That's when Christ comes at the second coming. Okay? Christ comes at the second coming. to have their peace, all right? And sets up the millennial kingdom. That's all well and good. But how about us in the body of Christ? When do we come in? What do we, chop liver? It's all Jewish. How about us? Fortunately for us, fortunately, we already have our peace. The Jews are going to have that peace then, but we have it now. All right? Amen. Jesus paid the price for our salvation by dying on the cross to pay for all our sins, past, present, and future. All right? And being resurrected on the third day for our justification. We have our peace now. No problem. He sees us in heaven with him right now. That's who we are. All right? Paul said it all in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Let's look at that. This is the key. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. This is Paul. Moreover, brethren, they declare unto you the gospel. Not a gospel. The gospel. The only one. All right? The gospel which I preached to you over and over and over again. All right? 
which also you have received. I gave it to you. All right? You can't say you didn't hear it. Wherein you stand. This is where you stand. All right? Verse 2, by which you are saved. This is why you're saved, by the gospel I've given you. All right? If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. If you didn't believe it, you're, you're dead meat. If you believe it, trust it, here it is. For I delivered unto you first, which I also received from Jesus, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. That Christ died for our sins on the cross. That's the key, all right? And that he was buried and rose again the third day. He was crucified, paid for our sins, buried and resurrected on the third day, and that was it, okay? We now have our blessed hope in Jesus, looking forward to his calling for us to meet him in the air. Just a matter of time. We're going to hear that trump of God, all right? Now, a lot of people say in the, the book of Revelation, the seven trumpets, okay, those are the angel trumpets. The seven trumpets is an angel trumpet, not the trump of God. The trump of God is separate. Don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to be God's trump that takes us up. Not a man-made trump, okay? All right, thank you. Have any questions? All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.